Okay, so let's continue our talk on reflections with this next slide. I think this is a summary slide, yes, of your rules going across the x-axis and y-axis. So again, if you have a point and you go across the x-axis, your y-coordinate will become opposite. Uh, versus if you go across the y-axis, so if you go across the y-axis, it is your x that becomes opposite. Okay, so in this picture here, right, here's the x-axis, here's our 0.46. When you go down, notice that the, the y becomes opposite of what it is. Okay. Now, if you go across the y-axis, again, here's that 0.46. If you go this way, notice it's now the x-coordinate that changes to the opposite. Now, let me take you to this explore, so we can just kind of give some more examples of what happens across these axes, right? So again, if I, let's try to find the point uh, 7, 2, right, as best I can. That's almost 7, almost 2. So notice when you go across the x-axis, it is the y that changes from positive to negative. And when I go across the y-axis, it is the x that changes from positive to negative. Now if I'm on one of the axes, so say I'm on the x-axis, notice I cannot move off the x-axis. So when I reflect across the x-axis, it's the same exact point. But I can reflect across the y-axis, and when I do, that x becomes opposite. Okay, so just a little explore activity to kind of emphasize these rules. Okay, well, what if we're not reflecting across those axes? Let's take a look at the next slide here. Okay, so it says, uh, what reflection rule maps triangle KLM to its image? Well, what I want to do here is I want to talk about um, the rule, right? And then I want to talk about the line of reflection. So let's just look at the points real fast. So k is at the coordinates negative 3, 5. k prime is at the coordinates of 5, negative 3. Uh, L is at the coordinates of 1, 3. L prime is at the coordinates of 3, 1. And m is at the coordinates of negative 5, 1. m prime is at the coordinates of 1, negative 5. So if you notice here, right, what is the rule going to be? Well, it looks like if I take a point, x, y, and I reflect it across this line, which you're going to find it eventually, it looks like the x and y just switch places each time, right? This is your x, y. When they come here, now your y is first and your x is second. So they switch places places. This is the general rule we're going to be talking about here. But what is the equation of the line that presents this rule? Well, let's find that out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the midpoints of two of these purple dotted connections. Because if we have two points, I can then find the equation of that line using point slope form. So I think a, a quick and easy way, because I have a graph, is counting the slope and then taking half of the slope. Right? Your midpoints will be equal to half of the slope counted. So let's count the slope from m to m prime. So m to m prime down, we're going to go down 6 and right 6. So the slope of m, m prime is down 6, right 6. Well, let's take half of that, right? Let's do an error. What's half of that? Well, that'd be down 3 and right 3. So let's go down 3 and right 3. There should be the midpoint of m to m prime. And that's the coordinates of negative 2, negative 2. Let's do the same thing with, let's say, l. Okay, l to l prime. So here's l. We're going to go down 2, right 2. So that's down 2, right 2. So the slope of l to l prime is down 2, right 2. Well, we're going to take half of those numbers. That's down 1, right 1. And if we go down and right one here is our second midpoint, and that's the coordinates of 2, 2. And now if we connect those two points, and I'll use purple, that, oh, not purple, orange, that is going to be our line of reflection, connecting the midpoints of two of those. So now we're going to find the equation of that line. So now I need the slope between that line. Well, I have two points on it, negative 2, 2, and 2, 2. Or, I'm sorry, negative 2, negative 2 and 2, 2. So let's count the slope. Well, I'm going to go up 4, and I'm going to go right 4. So the slope of our reflection line 
is up four, right four. That's the slope of one. And now I'm going to use point slope form. Y minus Y1 equals M parenthesis X minus X1. I'm going to use the point 2, 2 as my X1, Y1 because that is a point on that line. Y minus 2 equals M times X minus 2. I'm going to put this in slope intercept form. Y minus 2 equals, we're going to distribute the 1. 1 times X is X. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. And then to get y by itself, we're going to add 2 to both sides. The 2's cancel, y comes down, the x comes down, and the 2's cancel. There is your line of reflection. So y equals x is the line of reflection, line of reflection, that has that rule. Okay, so be aware of that. If you see that in a problem, we're reflecting across the line y equals x, all you have to do is flip the X's and the Y's. Okay, last but not least, a classic problem here. So this one says in a billiards game, a player must hit the white cue ball so that the cue ball hits the red ball without touching the yellow ball. Where should the cue ball bounce off the rail so that it hits the red ball? So again, this is very famous right now. If you're, if you're fancy, you just put curve around the cue ball and get, get around the yellow ball. But if you're not so fancy, you gotta kinda angle it off of the, the rail to hit the red ball. So here's how we're going to do this. All right, We're going to use the rail as the line of reflection. So this rail will be my line of reflection. First step, and I'll just do this in steps, we're going to reflect the red O over that rail. So if I look at how far it is right now, it's about yay far, perpendicular, go the same distance above theirs where the red ball is going to be, that's O prime. That's the first step. Second step, we're going to connect C to O prime. So the cue ball, I'm going to draw a straight line. And there I did, I connected C to O prime. And the third step is, I'm going to mark the intersection of the rail and O prime C with a point P. Mark the intersection point P. So this would be my point P. And this is the point. Now it's a little bit of a, of a gross I suppose my dotted line is a little high. It should be a little bit low. Maybe maybe here, right, where it hits the rail. Sorry about that. So move that point down here. But this is where I should hit the cue ball because if you look at the path of the cue ball, right, it's already going from here to this point. And when it balances, it's going to bounce at the same angle. And there we go. This segment and this segment are congruent. And so is this segment. This is what keeps this point the the uh, point you want again it's because these two angles the angle of if you go to science angle of uh, incidence and refraction I think is what they're called these two angles are congruent these two lengths will be congruent because these two lengths are congruent and that's why you need to bounce the cue ball off at point P bounce cue ball sorry bounce the cue ball At point P. There you go. So again, if you're ever playing pool or billiards, here's a, uh, a trick for you. Awesome. All right, so thanks for watching video two, and uh, good luck with the uh, practice problems.